then I went to college. And um, after that, I did uh, hair and beauty, city and guilds, um, diploma course, which certified me to be a practical hairdresser and uh, cosmetologist. Um, thereafter, I went actually to work, not work, to train at Lida Systems because he really was a pioneer in those days. Okay, and he passed away just about a month ago, so it's a really big deal in, in, in like the early 70s. Uh, so I trained there first and thereafter worked in the UK. When I came to Pakistan, I was a little bit, didn't know what to do. So this was my field, I really didn't know anything else. So I opened a, a little salon in my home. I won't even call it a salon, it was a little room, mm -hmm. a very small room, and I would take appointments as and when required. Because I had young children and they were growing up, and it was very difficult to, do, to be completely professional mm -hmm. and you know, a working mother. So from there, every time I went to the UK, that's going back about 25 years, every year I went, I did a, a course at Tony and Guy. Because then Tony and Guy was the forefront of the hair industry and they had started beginning, uh, they had started to, to build their academies and to look at education as their philosophy for hairdressers. And there was no other school in the UK who could even come close to competing with them. So every year I would go, I would do something or in those days it was every year, now I go very, very frequently. Um, so just, you know, kept on educating myself, coming back and working in my little salon. About seven, eight years ago, because um, I've been at the academy for a long time, I started making friends in the academy. And over a cup of coffee, somebody said, you know, you should think about this very seriously. And I said, think about what? And I said, you know, maybe you should do something with another guy there. So it clicked and it occurred to me. And I uh, met then the management, Tony himself, their team. And you know, it wasn't easy to get the franchise. There were lots of things I had to do. I actually had to do physical, um, practical examinations in front of like six art directors to show what my standard and my skill was. I had to do theory as well because I had to know what I knew. Um, and um, obviously there's, I was, I think I was pretty okay, but I wasn't as I am today. And that is obviously because I went through a process when I got the franchise, the, the whole deal is that you need to be as good as their educators or better because you're representing them in the outside world. And you have to be just like they are globally. So we've become like a family. So, um, they gave me the first franchise in Southeast Asia, which I was really happy to bring, called Essentials, which is their sister brand. There was no other Essentials or Tony and Guy in the Southeast Asian region at all. Not India, not Sri Lanka, not Bangladesh, nowhere. Okay? So we were the first in the region and I was really, really proud of that achievement. Um, I built a salon set up in the compound of my home for essentials. Uh, not knowing how the market was going to take it, how the business was going to go. Because, you know, seven or eight years ago, very few franchises were here in Pakistan. Now you have them all, you have the, the monsoons, the Nairo, the Debenham, the Excess Rice. But we, I think, really were, apart from Nike, Nike was around. But apart from them, we were probably one of the first franchises to come to Pakistan. And um, I'm not talking about restaurant chains, I'm talking about retail chains. Mm -hmm. Yes, the restaurants were there, there was McDonald's and Pizza Hut and all of that. So I opened, the, I built a salon in my home premises. And I had a lot of people, uh, business people from overseas who would want to come to see it. Because the clientele slowly built up, it took time. But I had big people who came from L'Oreal, like the heads of the region, not the local people. I had big people who came from Wella, from Germany, 
who came to the salon and said, you know, she's going to outgrow it in like two years. And I, at that time I thought, no way. You think, you, you don't expect it. Um, and I remember when they came from L'Oreal, uh, Paris, and uh, Ali Gore at that time was um, and company were looking after L'Oreal distribution because they didn't have a subsidiary here on the ground. Uh, he said to me, Arsha Ali Gore, he said, you know what the guy just told me, he's the biggest guy in the region, he says, you wanna, you're just going to grow without even realizing that's the how hard should he take it, you know, just forget it, it's not happening, I don't think I can do it. But then three years after Essentials, I decided when I saw the growth, the market response was I, really it was phenomenal. Okay. I decided let me bring in Tony and Guy as the brand to Pakistan. Essentials was already there. So when I went to approach them in, in the UK, and I said, look, I'd like to bring Tony and Guy. But I also had a different approach in mind. I said to myself, look, we've tried and tested Essentials and it works. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to bring Tony and Guy, I have to bring something different because Tony and Guy is around all over the world. I've got to make it very different. So what was the difference I could make? I couldn't make the difference in the work. All I could do is make the work better and better. The difference was the size of the salon. So, and a purpose base. So then with a lot of thought and a lot of um, financial workability and all of that, I said, okay, I'm going to build the world's largest Tony and Guy salon, mm -hmm. and it's going to be in Karachi. Okay. And that's what we did, and we, we, we put it forward to Tony and all of the, the managing directors there. And they were like, okay, yeah, sounds really great. It took three and a half years to build the salon. Because okay. it's not a converted house, it's okay. not a... A, a property that we, you know, so it took us three and a half years to build. And it took us a long time, one, because finances were a little bit restrained, so whenever you could afford it, you put it in, whenever you couldn't, you stopped the work. Um, also, I didn't want to compromise, I wanted to get it right. I wanted it to just, for anyone to come, whether you come from America or Europe or, you know, um, Asia, I wanted them to walk in here and say, where are we? Are we in Pakistan? Which would feel like we're in Pakistan. And I think that's what every single person who comes to the salon, regardless of whether you're a client or, or whether you're just accompanying a client, they actually feel like, where are they? So, you know, we need to create these kinds of things in our country to show that we have the population who wants to use these facilities, we have a very outward thinking. Um, so this salon came about, it will be four years this August. And after seeing how this has grown in the four year period, we reallocated essentials to the Forum Shopping Mall. So we have the original essentials that's gone to the Forum Shopping Mall. And last year, we um, you know, with a franchise, there are certain things you have to do. So growth is one particular one thing. And we have the master franchise for the entire southern uh, Pakistan, okay? Which is like, they've divided it into. Um, so the master franchise has certain, uh, certain requirements. Obviously, you need to grow in the market. You can't just have one or two and sit tight. So there is a plan, and that plan is a five-year plan, and we've already started working on the first year. We are going into the new Dolman Mall at the, at the hub front. Uh, we've started working there, we've taken a place which is 3,700, yeah, 3,700 square feet. So it's going to be a, a flagship mall, Tony and Guy salon. We have a joint venture with the salon, which has just been confirmed. So I can openly tell you about it now. It's taken me a long time to get this joint venture off the ground, but it's come through. Um, Unilever is uh, working very closely with us. So we'll be Tony and Guy on the skin center. Um, so they called me in as the expert to look after, because I am certified as a hair and 
um, beauty therapists. So I think they're also, you know, in, in, in their company, they've acquired certain high-end brands. And with high-end brands comes in, they're very good at their marketing, they're very good at their strategies and all of that, but they have no knowledge yeah. of hair or skin. So they are working with very good experts. And I think what, you know, that's why they came to me and said, look, would you do this with us? And of course, you know, working with a multinational is always a difficult thing because if you're an entrepreneur like me, you take decisions on the spot, you do things there and then, and nobody tells you what to do, it's just you. So a lot of thought process has gone into this joint venture and we are, I think we've come now a long way to say that yes, this is what we're going to do together and together we can be quite a strength, I feel. Essentials first. Essentials caters for, uh, because it's at the forum shop in morning, caters for a lot of walk in traffic mm -hmm. and maybe a younger student clientele mm -hmm. because the price is better. Right. We have student discounts going on throughout the year, mm -hmm. which is very reasonable and very affordable. Okay? For most and uh, they show a valid student ID and they can avail it. So Essentials is a walk-in traffic, I would say middle class mm -hmm. and student. Tony and I here is different because mm -hmm. I would say this is more your premium um, salon mm -hmm. with your two or three percent clientele who travel the world, who are uh, multi big multinational people, people who work at multinationals, people who who are brand related, who are, um, you know, um, who, who can maybe afford this kind of work. I'm not saying this is unaffordable because we have again different categories of who you want to go with. So you can avail of the category or you can avail of my services and obviously there's a premium attached to it. So I would say this is more the high end, essentials is the mid end. Um, if you talk about if you talk about late and Denny, mm -hmm. it's it's I would say middle to high end. Right. Okay. Um, having said that, at Essentials, I have a lot of clients who come from Hyderabad, Actually. and I was really surprised because they seem to have resources mm -hmm. and finances, but they don't know how to spend it because they don't travel to go outside. They, for them, traveling is coming to Karachi. They don't go to Europe, they don't go anywhere. And one of my clients said to me, you know, if you open something like this there, it would do really well. And I said, really? She said, yeah. She said, you know, we have no mall, we have no salon, who knows anything like this. That's why we all come here. Because apparently, they all, this crowd from Hyderabad, have properties here, they live here. And they come and spend the weekend and get all their shopping and get all their stuff done and go back there. So, you know, it's food for thought. I'm not saying I'm going to open a salon there, but when you get people talking to you like this, you start thinking, you start thinking, yeah, there's a market out there. And of course, yeah, I mean, I can't be there, but they can be, my staff can be there. Or I can train people who live there, you know, to, to carry that work on. And yes, maybe it may not be like, Tony and Guy or Essentials, maybe they won't have the top stylist level or the art director level, but they certainly can have a stylist level there. So that's food for thought. But late in Denny, I would say Nell Kebran, mid to high end, mm -hmm. yes. You know, on our Facebook site, we've like gone up to, I think, 20,000 fans in years which is pretty good and most of what, what it tells us from that is because that's your gauge yeah. to see um, plus our client database our biggest age group the, the, the most the most percentage we have in the age group is from 18 to 25 mm -hmm. the second is the 25 to 35 mm -hmm. and then it's 45 to 50. We have even now started getting the 45 to 55 year olds engaged in Facebook because you know that's the age that really is not engaged so much. 
So we've been able to attract them. Um, our client database says, again, because of the student office, we get the students. Like we get, it's not just school going students, but it's students at universities, at dental places, at Zabist, at, you know, at IBA. They're all coming in. So we're getting across the board. And then you have those people who just come in and just want to just switch off. So you have those as well. So I would say we have a balance, but yeah, uh, if you're asking really for the men, it would be from 18 to 35. Unki choice to hair 25, uh, 25 to 35, they want their hair cut looking fabulous. They're most worried about their cut and their styling. Second would come color. I would say between 35 and 45 is color. Okay, 25 to 35 is purely cut. Color is an option for them because number one, they're not gray. They don't have gray hair, so they're okay with it. You know, and if they want to add, they'll either add some of our extensions, you know, which have color in them, or they'll have very leaky color because of the you know price is a, is, is an issue. But they want styling and they want their haircut to be fabulous, and that's what we get in primarily.